Hey everyone, Sean Watase here back with another tutorial video. And in today's video, we're going to be building our very own geolocation NFT app. And what we'll be able to do with this application is place NFTs on a map and we'll be able to set the, the location of the NFT using the NFTs metadata. And then we'll be able to allow a user to claim one of those NFTs on the map as long as they're within a certain distance or range of that NFT. So an overview of what we're going to be covering in this video, we'll first Go over an overview of the application we're going to be building we'll take a look at it we'll demo it out and go over some of the things that are happening behind the scenes then we'll jump onto third web and deploy the contracts that we need for this application then we'll jump into our code editor and start building it out so with all of that being said let's jump on our computer here and take a look at our app so right over here, I have our application. This is uh, our very simple login screen. We just have a connect wallet UI component from third web here. So when we click on it, we have embedded wallets enabled, which allows us to sign in with social logins or email. I'll sign in with Google here, select my Google account. And this is going to be using again, our embedded wallets. Right here, once we have our application loaded, I'm going to just set my location here. And I'm just using um, Google Chrome here to set some custom locations here so I can move around without actually having to move around. And you can see here we have our marker of our user and around our map, we have these little GIFs, uh, which are going to be NFTs. So if we click on the GIFs, you can see the NFT that that uh, gift is and you have a claim button here. Uh, you can see this gift though is outside of the range that we need to be in in order to claim the NFT. So we can't claim it, uh, but we do have a gift that's within our range. So if I click on that, you can see here, we do have a button that we can claim that NFT with. So if I come over to this one here, you can see um, we can't claim it, but if I change my location over, let's just change our location here and I change my location over here to move next to the NFT, you can see we can now claim this NFT. So when I clicked on this here, uh, we can claim an NFT. This is actually utilizing Third Web's engine behind the scene. We are verifying the user's location one more time and making sure that they are able to claim the NFT. So you can see here, NFT was claimed successfully. We'll hit okay. And we can do the same thing if we move to location one. You see here in location one, we're just out of reach of this NFT, so we still can't claim it, uh, but we do now have this NFT within our range. So again, we can claim the NFT, it claims it, and then it will give us a little alert that our NFT has been claimed successfully. And these NFTs are being claimed to our embedded wallet, which we created for the user when they signed in with their social login or email. And again, these NFTs, the way we are placing them on the map is we are going to set the, the longitude and latitude of each NFT in the metadata of the NFT. And we'll use that metadata to then position those NFTs where they need to go. So that is a demo of the app that we're going to be building. So let's jump in and let's actually go to third web first to deploy our necessary contracts. So I'm gonna head on over to thirdweb.com. I'm gonna sign in with my wallet right here. And once connected, I'm gonna head over to the contracts tab. I'm gonna hit deploy a new contract up here. And for this application, we're going to uh, deploy an addition drop contract, which is an ERC 1155 contract. Uh, and what we'll have uh, with this is a claimable ERC 1155. So you can click in there. We'll hit deploy now in the top right. Uh, we'll just call this geolocation NFT. Uh, we'll give it a token of a geo and you can customize these and configure your parameters here for your contract. At the bottom here, you'll see network and chain this drop down here. You can select any mainnet or testnet. Uh, we support any EVM compatible blockchain, so you can choose what network you want to deploy on for this. I'm going to use Mumbai. And then once you have everything set and your network selected, you can hit deploy. Now we'll confirm the transaction to deploy our contract. And we'll sign this signature here to add it to our dashboard so we can view our contract using Third Web's dashboard. And once that is deployed, you'll see we have our geolocation NFT contract here. I'm just gonna copy this contract address and save it on the side. We'll need that for our application when we start to build it. And what I'm gonna do here, I'm not gonna deploy any NFTs just yet. We'll come back to this contract and deploy NFTs and again, set the metadata to the latitude and longitude that we want to place them on our map. So once we have this deployed, we'll just leave this here and we'll start building out our application. So I have my terminal open here and we're gonna create a new third web project. I'm going to run MPX third web create app. 
we're going to name our project here. We'll just call this a Geo NFT app. And we're going to use Next.js and TypeScript for this application. Once that is done, we'll change into our Geo NFT app folder. And before we open this up in our code editor, we're going to install a couple more things. Uh, we are going to be using a, a library called a leaflet for our maps. So we'll be using this React uh, leaflet here, and we'll link this down in the description below if you want to check it out. But essentially, it's going to allow us to create interactive maps like this within our application. So heading back to our terminal here, I'm just going to run npm install leaflet and React leaflet. And once we have that installed, we'll install uh, one more package here, uh, npm install and at types slash leaflet here. And once that is both installed, uh, we'll open up our code editor here with our project. So within our code editor, we're going to head over to the pages folder and we'll first head over to the underscore app.tsx file. And in here, we're going to set up our third web provider. So the first thing we need to do is set up our client ID here. And our client ID is going to be stored in this next public template client ID variable in our .env file. So coming back to our files here, you should see this .env.example file. And in here, we'll paste in our client ID. Now you can get a client ID. All you need to do is generate an API key with ThirdWeb. So if you come on over to ThirdWeb's site here and in our top navigation tabs, uh, go to settings. And in settings, you can create a new API key here if you don't already have one. Uh, if you want to learn a little bit more about API keys, we'll drop a link uh, to a video and documentation down below if you want to follow those. But you just need to create a new API key and we're going to make sure that it has uh, embedded wallets allowed within it uh, because we are going to be using embedded wallets as well within our app. So come back to our code editor here. I'm just going to paste in my API key here. And I'm going to come back to this file and I'm going to uh, rename it and get rid of this dot example at the end. So our file is just a dot env file. Now I'm going to actually add in a couple more or a few more variables here into our dot env file. Um, I'm going to add some variables here for our third web engine. So I have my third web engine URL right over here. I'm going to create an access token and provide it with my backend wallet when we get to that in our tutorial. Now, if you don't know how to set up your own instance of third web engine, we'll drop a link to documentation and a tutorial video that you can follow down below in the description. And then finally down here, we're going to have our next public, our map token, uh, which is what we're going to use to again, generate and design our maps for our app. So once we have that, we'll save, we'll head back to the underscore app.tsx file. And then the second thing we need to set up for our third web provider is our active chain. And that's being stored in this active chain variable right here at the top. By default, it is set to Ethereum. We're going to change this to, um, or in my case, I'm going to change this to Mumbai because I deployed my NFT contract to Mumbai. Uh, you'll set this active chain to the chain that you deployed your contracts to. And that does it for the required fields for our third web provider. Now we can open up our terminal in here and I'm going to run yarn dev to run our app. And we'll have this running on the 3000. So we'll come back here to our app. Let's refresh this really quick. And we have our templated uh, third web project here. Now we do have this connect wallet button and you can see here by default, this connect wallet button supports all these wallets here, but we only want embedded wallets. Uh, we want to make this a user friendly uh, experience. So we just want to make sure people can just sign in with a social login or email. And to set up that embedded wallet with third web, it's very simple. All we're going to do is head back to our underscore app.tsx file. And in our third web provider, we can put this right under our active chain. We're going to add our supported wallets and we're going to give it an array of the wallets that we want to support. And all we want to do here is add embedded wallet and we'll save that and head back. And just like that, we now support embedded wallet through our connect wallet UI component. So if I click on that. We have our social logins here and we can use our emails as well. So if I click on this and we use this to sign in with Google, I can select my email here. And just like that, we are signed in now with a wallet that was created for us. So heading back to our code editor now, we have our third web provider set and we now support embedded wallets through our application. And all we need is embedded wallets here because we just need our user to have a wallet to send the NFTs to. All the gas and everything we're gonna handle using engine and our backend wallets. Now heading to our file directory here, I'm going to create a new folder here 
and I'm going to name this constants and I'm going to create a new file in that called constants.ts and we're just going to create uh, export a constant called NFT contract address and we're going to provide it here with the contract that we deployed. So let me get that really quick, paste that in here. And this is just so we can use this NFT contract address variable throughout our app. Next, we'll head back to our files in the pages folder. We're going to go to the index.tsx file this time. And this is where our third web templated application is. I'm going to get rid of everything within this container, uh, this div with the container styles here. So all of this right here, I'm just going to select and delete. We'll also get rid of this image import. We're not going to be using that here. And I'm just going to add a connect wallet button here. So now if we go to our application, uh, we should just see this connect wallet button. And we want to, if I sign out here, we're just going to center this connect wallet button right here in the middle. And what we want to check is once a user signs in or connects with a wallet, it should bring them to our uh, map. And if not, we should just have the button here in the middle of our application. So we can accomplish this by one, checking if a wallet is connected to our application or not, or if a user is signed in. And we'll create a constant here called address. And we're going to use a hook called use address here from third web. And what use address does is it gets the connected wallets uh, wallet address and returns us that wallet address has a string. Uh, and if it doesn't have a wallet address, it's going to return us undefined. So we can actually use that here to check if we don't have an address, we can uh, return here a div and we'll just return a uh, connect your wallet. And we can give this here some styling just to center it here. So once we are connected, if we go back to our app, uh, we'll just get rid of that H1 heading there. So we just have our wallet button right here in the middle. So once we connect, uh, we should see our wallet button move up to the top left here because uh, what we'll do is if there's no address connected, we're displaying this here. And once we are connected, we're going to be displaying this here and then we'll just add um, some text here that says uh, connected really quick. So if I connect in here, I sign in with Google. Back in our app here, you can see we are now connected and this is where we can display our map and everything. So I'm going to disconnect or log out here again. Uh, we're going to change this connect wallet button here to be something a little bit more non web three user friendly. So we're going to come back here and in this connect wallet button here, we can add a button title and we can just have this say sign in. That way now in our app, it says sign in. And when they click on that, they can now select the social login or email they want to uh, sign in with. So now we have our login page set. Uh, next thing we want to do is create, once they are logged in, we want to display that map and everything for them. So I'm going to get rid of this connected here and we're going to create our map component. Now, before we create a map component, we're going to come back to our files here and I'm going to create a new folder, call this utils. And within that, I'm going to create a new folder called types. And within that, I'm going to create a file called types.ts. And we're going to create a type for coordinates here because we are going to be using our latitude and longitude throughout our application. So I'm just going to create uh, export a type called coordinates where the latitude is a number, longitude is a number as well. Uh, and that way we can use this coordinates type throughout our app. Next, I'm going to come back to my files. I'm going to create a new folder. This folder is going to be called components. And in that components folder, we're going to create a new file called map.tsx. And this is going to be our map component here. So in our map component, we're going to first create our own custom uh, marker icons, uh, just because we are going to have a marker for our user and we're going to have a marker for the GIFs or the NFTs that we place on the map. So I'm going to create a new variable here called user icon. This is going to be our icon marker that we use for the user. And what we're going to set here is our icon URL. So we're going to add our image called a user marker PNG. We're going to set icon sizes, our icon anchor and our pop-up anchor right over here. So in my file directory here, I'm going to add my custom marker right over here into my uh, public folder. You can see this is just a custom icon marker that I have right over here. 
I'm also going to add in the NFT one as well right now, uh, which is a GIF icon. So if I put that into public too, we have this little gift one right over here. And those are the icons that we're going to use for our markers. So you can see here, this one's going to be referring to the user marker, which is uh, our marker for our user. Next, we're going to create our map component here. So map. And we'll make sure at the bottom here, we uh, export our map component. Next, we're going to want to make sure that we can get the, the real time location of our user. So we're going to create a uh, map event handler. Uh, this is going to be a react functional component here. And this component here is going to take our users coordinates. So we're going to create a type here called map event handler props, which is going to have a position here, which is going to have a type of coordinates, which we will import from our types. And then we will give this here a type of our map event handler props. And what this is going to take is the position or the current position of our user here. And what we'll do here is we're going to create a variable called a map and we're going to use map. We'll import that from react leaflet and we're going to create a use effect here. And in this use effect, what we're going to do is set the position of our user on the map. So we're going to check uh, if uh, position dot latitude is not equal to zero and position dot longitude is not equal to zero. We're going to get our map and we are going to use the fly to and we are going to fly to the position that our user is at. So we're going to set this to position latitude and position longitude. And we're going to set to this uh, map dot to get zoom and that will zoom into our users current location. And we're setting this use effect here to um, once we get the position and map set. And down here, we are going to uh, return null. So now in our map component here, we can create and display our map. So first thing we're going to do is create a state variable for position, which we're going to use a use state here, uh, set it as coordinates. And we're going to just set this to um, some random coordinates here. And we'll save that. And then we're also going to create some a variable called watch ID. Uh, which is going to be the way that we update our current location for our user. So we're going to create a, a function here called get the location. And we're going to use um, our navigator here within our browser to check uh, the current location of our user. So in here, we're going to check to make sure that uh, navigator.geolocation is supported by our browser. And if not, then we'll alert that geolocation is not supported by your browser. If it is, we're going to then get the watch position, uh, which we're going to watch the real time position of our user. And then with the position, we are going to then set the latitude and longitude of the current position of our user to the position coordinates latitude and same with the longitude here as well. And if we have an error, we'll just uh, alert that we're unable to access location. And then basically the user has to allow and enable location services within the browser settings. We're also going to add this here, which is a high enable accuracy, which will just give us a bit more of a pinpoint location of where our user currently is located. Then below this, we are going to create a use effect here. So with this use effect here, we're going to get the location and we're going to set our watch ID here so that we can watch the real time location of our user. And now that we have the position of our user, we can now display our map. So we're going to create a map container here using leaflet. And in our map container, we're going to give it the center, which is going to be the position of our user. So we're going to set that to position latitude and position longitude here. We're going to set the zoom. I'm just going to set the zoom to 16. Uh, this is just how zoomed in uh, the map is going to be to our user. And then I'm just going to give it a styling of 90 
100% of our view height and a width of 100% of our window. We're then going to add our map event handler here and set the, the position to the position of our user. Next, we are going to add a tile layer. And this is where we're going to display our map. Now we're going to use something called Mapbox to create our map here. So we'll link this down in the description down below as well. Uh, but you're going to sign in and create a Mapbox account. And then you're going to create yourself a token here. So we can just create a token. Uh, we can just say this is for our YouTube tutorial. And then we can just hit create token. So right over here, we have our YouTube tutorial token. We can copy that and we'll add that into our environment variables in a bit. So coming back to our dashboard here, we can create a map in studio and we can create a new style here. And this is where you can either choose your own template. You can, you know, design your own map or tile layer here. So we'll just choose a classic one here. We're going to do monochrome. Uh, we'll do dark. And then we can just hit customize here. And then again, through here, you can customize your own. And then under the uh, share here, we're going to uh, copy this URL here that has the api.mapbox.com slash styles. So we'll copy that. we will come back to our code editor here. And under tile layer, we're going to set our URL. And our URL is going to be, we'll paste this in we're going to uh come over here and we're going to edit this url a bit so we have api.mapbox.com styles we have our username here and our style id and we're going to get rid of the url that comes after that and we're going to set this to tiles slash 256 we're going to give it our z x and y we'll set this to two times and then we'll get our access token and we're going to set this access token to our dot env dot next public map box token and i don't know if that was what we named it here let's check uh map token so let's make this the same here there we go and then we're going to get our token from our access token here from uh, Mapbox, and we're gonna come back here, and then in our .env file, we're gonna give it our token here. And uh, let me just check. Oh, we have a error right up here. I'm just gonna fix this real quick. We just need to import L. So import L from leaflet, there we go. And right here in our tile layer, under the URL, we're going to set the attribution here to Mapbox. So, We'll set attribution here to um, Mapbox and that will be our tile layer. So if we save this here and we go back to our index.tsx under this connect wallet, let's add our map component here. We'll save that, come back to our app. Once we sign in, let's sign in with Google here. And ooh, looks like we're getting an error window is not defined. That is right. So back in our code editor, uh, I forgot to add this. Uh, we'll have to make sure that we add in uh, right up above here. Um, and we're just going to add this here. And what we're going to basically do is uh, leaflet um, the library that we're using to generate our map by default does server side rendering. So we're going to make sure that we render our map with no server side rendering. And we're just going to import the dynamic here make sure we point it to our map component and we're gonna set the server side rendering to false. Now, when we save this and come back to our app, let's refresh the page here. And it's, oh wait, coming back here, uh, uh, we gotta set this to this one. So set map to our map with no server side rendering. Then we can come back here and we should see once we're signed back in, there you go, you can see our map is moving and it should be loading our tiles right now. There you go, it's loading a bit slow, but we're going to now set our markers so that we can see that within our map. So coming back to our map.tsx file here, under the tile layer, we're going to create our marker. And within our marker, we're going to also create a circle. And this is gonna allow us to create that blue circle around our user. So we'll set the circle here. We're going to set the center to our position. We'll set the radius here 
and I just have this set to a tenth of the mi uh, mile. So we're going to put 934. We'll set the color here to blue. We'll set the fill color to blue and we'll set the fill opacity to uh, 0.1. For our marker here, we're going to set the position to the position latitude and position longitude. And we're going to set the icon to our custom user icon that we created up top. So when I save that, come back to our app here. Let's refresh this one more time. And there you have it. You can see we zoom into our user location here and we have our uh, blue circle that we added on and our custom map marker. So now we're able to locate our user. So I'm just going to use Chrome here. We'll just change locations here. So you can see I can change the location of my user here. There you go. We can change it to location three as well. So we are now able to pinpoint our user. Now let's put some NFTs here on our map. So coming back to our third web dashboard and to our contract dashboard here for our geolocation NFT. We're going to come on to the left hand navigation here and we're going to mint ourselves some NFTs. So I'm going to go to NFTs here and we're going to do a single upload. We'll name this uh, location one. You can add in your file here. So let's just add in this T-Rex emoji here. We can add a description, uh, but the one important thing that we're going to have to add here is our properties. So we're going to add a uh, latitude, which I'm going to set the latitude value here. And then we're going to set the, the longitude, which I'm going to set my longitude to here. Now, if you want to learn how to get latitude and longitude, you can simply go to Google Maps. And wherever you want to place your NFT, you can just right click and you'll have the latitude and longitude here. You can just copy it and you supply those latitude and longitudes into your NFTs metadata. So wherever you right click, you'll be able to get the latitude and longitude. Uh, that's how I did it. Again, just go to Google Maps and then right click to where you want to place it. So once you have the latitude and longitude set, we'll go ahead and lazy mint that NFT. We'll confirm our transaction here. And there you go. So. We're going to do this. We'll just do one more NFT here. So we'll just single upload this. We'll do a location two. I have a whale emoji here. We're going to set the latitude and the longitude here and we'll lazy mint that. So we now have two uh, gift or prize NFTs that we're going to be putting on our map with the metadata set to the latitude and longitude of the location that they should be in. Now we need to set the claim conditions for these. So there's a few ways we can do this. So I'm going to open up uh, our engine tab here and I'm going to be connecting to uh, my instance of engine here. Now, again, if you want to set up your own instance of engine, we'll drop a link down in the description of some docs and a tutorial video you can follow. But once you have your instance of engine up and running and you have it connected and what you'll see here is your backend wallets and your backend wallets are the wallets that you can use to call like claim to functions which we're going to be doing here now because this wallet is calling the claim to function because this backend wallet is a wallet that's going to be doing all the transaction executions we need to make sure that this wallet has access to mint or claim nfts so there's a few ways you can go about doing this we can take this backend wallet address here and in our geolocation NFT, we can come to our explorer here and we can uh, set the owner to our back end wallet. And then what we could do then is in our NFTs, we could set the claim condition of our NFT to only the owners able to claim it. So if I select this here, we can go claim condition. We can add a phase. I can do only owner. So let's just say only owner here. Um, and we hit save phase. We could then save this and only the owner would be able to uh, mint the NFTs. And in that case, the owner would be our backend wallet. Now, the one thing with that is claim an unlimited amount of NFTs for that NFT. So you can do this if you want to, again, just have an unlimited amount where people can claim it. But if you do want to control the amount, say we only want to have, say, 10 of these NFTs available, what we can do is we'll remove this phase and we're going to do an allow list phase. And we can do this where we can add a claimer snapshot. So we're just going to get an example snapshot here. You can download that example snapshot file. 
And then you can open that example snapshot file right over here. And you can see we just have to have it set up with our address and our max claimable. So you can put in the back end wallet address here and then set the max claimable, which would be the supply that you want to have claimable for that NFT. So in this case, we have our back end wallet. We'll set the claimable to 10. So once 10 of these NFTs are claimed, no more of these NFTs will be able to claim if we use this snapshot here. So coming back to our dashboard here if i take that snapshot file and i add it in you can see our wallet address here with the max claimable of 10. so we'll hit next and we're going to set to how many nfts will be in this drop phase to 10. and what we'll do here is then save this phase so again, only our backend wallet will be able to claim 10 NFTs. But because the way Engine works, again, that backend wallet is doing the claiming of the NFTs for the users. So essentially what we'll do is the backend wallet will claim the NFT and send it to whatever wallet address is attached to the embedded wallet that the user signed in with. So we confirm that transaction. And then once that saves, we can set the claim condition for the exact same thing. Uh, we'll do the exact same for the other one as well. So we'll go back to location two now. We'll set the claim condition. We'll add the allow list only phase. We'll edit our snapshot here, drop in our CSV file, and we'll set this to 10 only again. And then we'll save this too. Confirm that transaction. And there you go. We now have uh, claim phases for each of our NFTs. Next thing we need to do now that we have our NFTs is place those GIF markers on the map and they should be put into the locations where these NFTs are. So come back to our code editor. I'm going to go to my components folder and I'm going to create a new file and we're going to call this one our NFT marker .tsx. And the first thing we're going to do is create a type of our marker component props here. This is going to take our NFT, which will give it an, a type NFT, which will import from a third web react. And we'll give it the user position, which will be of type coordinates. We'll create our NFT marker component here, and we'll make sure we export that component at the bottom. And we'll create our component right over here. Next, we're going to create a variable for our custom marker. So again, this time we're pointing to the NFT marker image that we gave, and we're going to import L from leaflet. And now before we start creating our NFT marker component here, NFT should only be claimable if they are within distance of our user, which is also why we're giving the user position here, because we'll need to know the position of the user to make sure we know whether or not the NFT is claimable. Now we're gonna create a little function here to see if the NFT marker is within distance. And in my file directory here, I'm just gonna create a new folder. We'll call this lib. And in our lib, we're gonna create a new file called haversign distance.tsx. And within this, we're going to use a math formula. I'm just gonna copy this here. And what we're gonna do here is we're creating a function called the haversign distance, which is going to take our coordinates. So coordinates one, which is going to be the latitude and longitude of one coordinate, and then the latitude and longitude of another coordinate. And then we have a Boolean here just to see um, the distance that we put in is in miles. And what we're gonna do is this mathematical formula here, which is going to return to us whether or not the two coordinates are within the specified distance of each other. So I'm gonna save that. And coming back to our NFT marker here, we can now create our marker. And this marker again will show our image of our NFT, have a button that should allow a user to click on it if they are within distance and claim that NFT. So first thing we're gonna do here is get our address of our user because we're going to need to know what wallet address to send our NFT to. Then I'm going to create a few uh, state variables here. So the first one is going to be for is claiming. We'll use that for if we're claiming the NFT. We'll just import use state here. The next one is going to, we're going to get the, the latitude of our NFT. And to get this, we are going to get the uh, NFT, which we are going to provide when we uh, map through our NFTs. So we get the NFT, we're going to get the, the metadata, we're going to then get the attributes, 
and we're going to get the value of attribute zero. And we're just going to add a TS TypeScript ignore here. And we're going to do the same thing for our longitude. And we'll add the same thing here. Uh, longitude will be the second attribute value. And then we'll set the, the NFT position variable, which will be a coordinate, which will set the latitude to the latitude we just got and the longitude to the longitude that we got. And then we're going to set the radius. So this is the distance that we want the NFT and the user to be within. We'll just set this to a tenth of a mile. And then we will check uh, is within a radius. So we just have to import our function here. We give it our user position and our NFT position, and it will return to us if our user and NFT are within the range of each other. For our component, we'll create a marker here. Our marker's position will be our NFT position. And we'll set the icon here to our NFT icon. Now in our marker, we're going to create a pop-up. And within that pop-up, uh, we're gonna show the the image of the NFT and then a claim button. So to show the image of the NFT, we're going to use a media renderer component here. And we're going to set the uh, source to the nft.metadata.image. Then we're gonna create ourselves a button here. And this button uh, based on if our NFT is being claimed or not, we'll say claiming NFT or it'll say uh, claim NFT. And our button here will be uh, disabled if it is not within range and if our NFT is being claimed. And we'll then create an on-click function here for our NFT to claim uh, that NFT. And within this pop-up, we're just gonna wrap this within a div here. So we'll take this, put it within here. And let's create our onClick function next. So what we're gonna do for our onClick function is actually use ThirdWeb's engine to make an API call to claim our NFT. So coming into our file directory here under pages, I'm gonna create a new folder here called API. And then within that, I'm gonna create a file and we're gonna call this mintnft.ts. So what I'm gonna do here is I'm actually gonna open up my terminal and I'm gonna run a yarn add at thirdweb dev slash engine here. Once that's done, we'll just close that out. And what we're gonna do here is create our handler for our claim and the next API response from next. And within our handler here, we're going to first check that our request is a post request. So if a request dot method is not equal to post, we'll just send a respond with a status 405 saying method is not allowed, please use a post. We'll then get our variables that we're going to need for our, we'll then get the variables that we'll need for engine, which will be our engine URL, our access token and backend wallet. So once you have your instance of engine up and running, we'll come back to ours right over here. You can get your backend wallet, so we can copy this. Uh, we'll go to our .env file. We'll set our backend wallet, and then you'll need your access token. So if you come back over here and you go to permissions, you can then create yourself an access token, which will allow you API access to your engine instance. So I have copy and pasted in my access token and backend wallet. Next thing we're gonna do is we're going to make our API request. So I'm gonna run a try catch here. And in our error, we're just going to uh, console error our error and give a response of uh, status 500 and we'll just say an error of something went wrong. Now in our try here, we're going to make sure one that we have all of our engine variables. Uh, so we'll check to make sure we have our URL, our access token and backend wallet. If not, we'll throw an error saying that we're missing the environment variables. We're then gonna get some values from our request body here, which are going to include the uh, token ID, the address that we are sending the NFT to, our user's position, and the NFT position. So we're gonna double check to make sure that those, uh, the user and the NFT are still within the required range of each other. 
So we're going to set here the uh, radius that we're going to check, which again is going to be uh, a tenth of a mile. And then we're going to say uh, create a variable here to check uh, is within range, which we're going to use the Haversine distance formula again. And we're going to set the user position, the NFT position. Uh, we are using uh, miles, so we're going to set that third parameter to true. That will give us back if, again, those two, the NFT and the user are within the proper range of each other. And if they are not within range, so we'll say if not is within range, we will return with a response of a status 400 saying that you are not within range of the NFT to claim. Uh, but then here we'll put else, uh, if they are within range, this is where we can now claim the NFT. So if they are within range, we're gonna get our engine here. So we'll just say engine equals new engine. And we're going to provide engine here with our URL, which will be our third web uh, engine URL and our access token, which will be our third web access token. And once we have that, we can now call our claim to function. So we'll get our response back and we are going to await uh, engine here. And we can specify here that this is for an ERC 1155 and we're gonna call the claim to function. And then we just need to provide it with these things here. So the first thing is our chain. And we can just say we know what chain this is. So we're going to put in Mumbai. This will be the chain that your contract is on. Uh, the second thing is the contract address. So we're going to get it our NFT contract address, which we stored in our constants. Next, we're going to give it our backend wallet, which is under third web uh, backend wallet. And then we have our request body, which includes the receiver, the token ID, and the quantity that we are claiming. So the receiver here is going to be our address that is provided to us. The token ID is going to be the token ID. And the quantity is whenever someone clicks on this, it's just gonna be they're able to claim one NFT. And with that, we'll respond with a status 200, saying that the NFT was able to be claimed. So now if we head back to the NFT marker here, we can create this claim function. So we're gonna create a variable here called claim NFT. And what we're gonna do here is first set claiming to true. We'll run a try catch here. And the error will just alert the error message. Uh, we'll set this to type any. And in our try here, we'll get our response, which we are going to await fetch our uh, slash API slash mint NFT. The uh, method is going to be post. Uh, we'll set the headers here to content to content type application JSON. And then we'll set our body here to JSON stringify, which we'll have to give it our token ID, which is going to be NFT metadata.id. We have to provide it with our address we're sending the NFT to, which is going to be the address we get uh, using the use address hook here. Below that, we'll get the user position, which will be our user position, and the NFT position, which will be the NFT position. Then we'll get back our data here, which we will await the response. And if our response is not okay, we will throw an error and then we'll give that data dot uh, message. And once everything is good, we will alert here and say that uh, NFT was claimed successfully. And then we'll finally set here our set is claiming to false. So now coming down here to our on click, we can set that to claim NFT function and that does it for our NFT markers. So now we just need to display these markers within our map. So coming back over to our map.tsx, we're going to display those NFT markers. But we're first going to need to get the NFTs that we need to display. So we first need to get our contract and we can use the use contract hook from third web and give it our NFT contract address. 
Uh, we'll then need to get the data of our NFTs. So we'll get NFTs and we'll use the use NFTs hook from ThirdWeb and supply it with the contract that we just got. And this is going to give us back an array of the metadata of the NFTs within this contract. So coming down below this marker here, we can now add the NFT markers. So we're first going to check, uh, make sure that we have our NFT uh, metadata and that the NFTs dot length is greater than zero. And this is to make sure that uh, we actually have NFTs within our contract to display. And then what we're going to do after that is map through each of those NFTs. And for each NFT, we are going to create an NFT marker. And for our NFT marker, we need to give it a key, which we can just set to the ID of the NFT. We need to give it our NFT, and then we need to give it our user position, which is going to be the position here in our maps. And I am missing a bracket here. And now our NFTs should be displayed with our NFT marker. So coming back to our application here, let's refresh. You can see here it's taking us to our current location. You can see our GIF markers already. You can see our user marker. So right over here, we can see that we have our NFT number one, which is that dinosaur emoji. Right now, we can't claim the NFT because we are not within distance. So let's change to location one here. Now we are within distance. You can see the button is no longer disabled. We can hit claim NFT. And once it's done claiming, you can see our NFT has been successfully claimed. We can actually take a look back at our contract. So let's take a look at our NFT contract here and you can see our supply is one. Now, if we go to our events here, we can see that we have a token claimed and you can see the claimer here was our backend wallet and the receiver was the address ending in 4076, which if we look at our wallet here, you can see 076 is this wallet right over here. So again, we are now able to claim the NFT because we are within distance. Our backend wallet claims it for us and executes the transaction. So this is completely gasless on the user's behalf and it claims that NFT and sends it to the user's wallet. Now we can test this out with uh, number two here. You can see we can't test it or claim it with this well emoji. Let's move on over to location two. Now that we're moved on over to location two, you can see we can claim it. We'll hit claim NFT, you can see it's claiming here. And once it's been claimed, you can see NFT has been successfully claimed. We can take a look back at our contract. Uh, we actually should see a new event come up for a new one. Uh, you can see this time we claimed token ID one, uh, same thing to our address ending in 4076, claimed by our backend wallet. We can check NFTs here and you should see the supply of both are now at. So there you have it. We created our very own geolocation NFT app where you can claim NFTs based on a user's geolocation and you can place NFTs wherever you want on the map by setting the latitude and longitude to the metadata of that NFT. So again, I hope you folks enjoyed this video. If you did give this video a thumbs up, don't forget to hit that subscribe button and don't forget to turn on your notification bell so you don't miss out on tutorial videos just like this. If you have any questions, we'll drop a link down in the description below where you can open a support ticket and our support team will be happy to help you out and answer any of your questions. But again, I hope you folks enjoyed this video. You found some value in it and until next time, see ya.